the Writer's Almanac for Tuesday, October the 27th, 2020. It's the birthday of Zadie Smith, born Sadie Smith in London, 1975, Jamaican mother, English father, wanted to be a tap dancer, then be a jazz singer. She managed to get into Cambridge, where she worked hard writing fiction, wrote short stories, and one short story got too long to be a short story, and she kept writing, and eventually it became her first novel, White Teeth, came out in 2001. It's the birthday of the poet Sylvia Plath, born in Boston, 1932, excellent student, went to Smith College. She was a guest editor for Mademoiselle magazine, graduated highest honors, 1955, won a Fulbright to study at Cambridge, where she met and married the poet Ted Hughes. In 1960, she gave birth to a daughter. And she published The Colossus, the only book of her poems to be published during her lifetime. She decided to write a novel based on her experience the summer she worked at Mademoiselle. She won a fellowship to work on the novel, a fellowship from the publishers Harper and Rowe. But once she finished the book, the editors rejected it. They thought it was overwritten, immature. The novel called The Bell Jar published in England January of 1961, and a month later, Sylvia Plath committed suicide. Many people learned about her only after her death. They read her poems in obituaries and news stories. In 1965, a collection called Ariel was published posthumously, and Sylvia Plath became more and more popular. The Bell Jar finally came out in this country, stayed on the New York Times bestseller list for six months. Sylvia Plath, who wrote, Everything in life is writable about if you have the outgoing guts to do it and the imagination to improvise. The worst enemy to creativity is self-doubt. Here's a poem for today by Maria Maziotti Gillen, Bell Bottoms and Platform Shoes. A friend sends me a picture of herself from the 70s, Bell Bottoms, Platform Shoes, a patterned button down shirt, hair puffed up from a perm. I can see the outline of the person she is now, and she reminds me of myself in the 70s, married for eight years to a man I knew I loved the moment I saw him, two children who seem to me exquisitely beautiful because they look like my husband and not me. The picture reminds me of all those evenings when I dressed in bell-bottoms and silky patterned shirts and shoes with clunky heels, those evenings we'd invite friends over for drinks and conversation, our children asleep upstairs, those clothes, the perm I got because I wanted to be cool, though my hair was already kinky, so the perm made me look like I'd stuck my finger in the light socket. I look at a picture of us from that time, Dennis and I, standing together at the head of the dining room table, friends seated around us, Dennis's face is flushed, his eyes shining, I wonder if he's tipsy, he's wearing a fitted shirt with little flowers on it, I am grinning and looking up at him, I might as well be wearing a neon sign that says I love you, looking back at us, I would like to tell my younger self, look how fortunate you are, the man you love beside you, your children sleeping in their safe beds, your friends around you. Listen, be grateful for the moments caught in these photographs, the world full of possibility, the sky not yet darkened. A poem by Maria Maziotti Gillen, bell-bottoms and platform shoes from What Blooms in Winter, published by NYQ Books and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.